Dan, can you share some of the things you've done and, and what helped make that decision on why you moved to Dallas or, or whatever you want to share with them, bud? Okay. Just to help them. Well, all right. First of all, I mean, I, I appreciate what you and John taking time to do uh, because it is not something you have to do. Um, thank both of you guys for being the selfless gentleman that you are. Um, I've worked with a lot of people before my life and never have had anyone take time to want to see me get an increase or substantial increase in my income. So I really appreciate you all helping us on Tuesday mornings grow our businesses. Uh, but um, this this move was um, kind of, at first I was super, super excited about it. Um, um, I would talk to, uh, I think the first person I talked to about this move was Eric Anthony. And and the more we talked about it, I said, you know, okay, then I talked to Ryan about it a little bit, and you know, and he was like, yeah, bro, I think it might be a good deal. And, and then I said, okay, but it really stemmed from one of the Wednesday night um, calls that we used to have with you, Mike, and, uh, and John, and uh, you were saying that, hey, you know, it's time for you guys to kind of, you know, to kind of put your big boy drones on and let's get this thing moving. You know, when are you going to do something different? You know, when are you going to step outside the box? And first I said to myself, I was like, well, you know, I'm all, in my mind, I'm already doing something different. You know, I'm doing something I like to do, but I don't like to do it. And, you know, a lot of people don't know probably outside of Mike and John that, I literally don't like what I do every day. I don't really care for people. And, you know, and, and it keeps me in an uncomfortable situation. And, um, and, but I do believe deep down on the inside is the only way you could gain any kind of success from anything is you have to remain uncomfortable. And so I started thinking about it. Where can I go uh, to where I can not be in a market to where I'm running into uh, my own teammates, um, where I have an, an unlimited source of leads, um, where I could grow in a market where there's, you know, no one else is really there. And that's how Dallas arrived in, in, in my mind. And I said, okay, well, I thought about this before. I tried it before, hiring a, 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 a abroad and end up getting burned a couple times from out here because it's just some about some of these folks. They're just not born with the, the best uh, source of honest mindset. I, I, that's the only way I can really put it. And so I, um, at first I, I, I made a conversation to Michelle because I, I was afraid that she was going to say no. I, I really was. But then ultimately I forgot that she had already established a relationship with Mike Kilman herself. So her telling me no was she said yes too fast. She didn't even think, she didn't even think twice about it. And when I told her, I was like, you know, babe, I'm thinking about us going to Texas, Dallas, and opening up an office. And, uh, she says, uh, okay. And I'm looking like, oh, man, that wasn't supposed to happen like that. She's supposed to put up a little fight because I was really hoping she said no. And that's just being perfectly honest with you. Because, you know, sometimes you, you make decisions. You know it's the right decision. But if someone gives you just least bit of resistance, it's like, okay, why? Well, I'm not going to do it. I'll, I'll wait. Because that, that's what I was kind of looking for in all honesty. And then she says, well, babe, you know, you need to talk to the kids. I said, okay. So the first person I called was my son. And I say, hey, man, you know, I want to talk to you about something. Um, I was kind of praying. He said no. <laughs> and he says, uh, I says, hey, man, I'm thinking about moving to Dallas. I know we got Ari, which is my granddaughter, in Houston. But I have a business partner already in Houston, so it's kind of dumb to move to Houston. Uh, he has that area already. 
Uh, he said, well, Dad, what you what are you thinking about doing? I said, I'm thinking about going to Dallas. At least it will put me fairly close to, to Ari. I'll be four hours away rather than, you know, 14 and a half hours away. And um, if anything ever goes wrong with her, I can get there in four hours uh, in a car and 38 minutes on the flight. And he says, well, Dad, he says, well, um, Mr. Mike have not steered you wrong yet. Uh, Mr. Mike, I watch you grow in a different way since you've been dealing with this man. So I'll say to you, Dad, go do what you got to do. Have you talked to Chevelle and Lavelle yet? I told him no. He says, now, Dad, that's where your challenge going to be. I was like, okay, great. So I'm expecting for them to give me a no as well. And so when I get home that day, because uh, I drove up, my son lives up near Tennessee. I left the office one day, went to kind of see him, but he wasn't home, so we end up on the phone. But anyway, I get home, and I sit down and talk to the girls. I knew that was going to be a challenge for me. I have never, ever, ever been away from my kids. Never. Um, that's why I've always remained self-employed, because I needed to control that father-daughter relationship, that father-son relationship, I needed to control that because I grew up without that. And um, hmm. when I sat out to talk to them, they said the same thing, that Mr. Mike, we've met him. We've met... Uh, this guy, John, they, they've heard of John, but haven't really sat down and talked to him. And they said to me, Dad, Mr. Mike ain't never led you wrong. It ain't no people there at that company that have led you wrong. We are excited because of the growth that we see in you personally. And we think you should go ahead and do it. And I kind of looked at the both of them. And I asked them, I said, are you sure? Do you know what this means? And they said, yes, Dad. We, 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 I think we can figure it out. So I went to Michelle. I'm like, they had a conversation with them. Uh, this is uh, April. Um, actually, this was February. She says, well, when are we going to do it? I said, well, we're going to do it uh, May 9th. We're going to have an office open May 9th. She's like, are you crazy? I thought you was talking like a year from now. No, babe. If we're going to do this, i got to do it right now. Because if I don't do it right now, I'm going to change my mind. I swear to God I am. And she says, well, let's just go. When are we leaving? Tomorrow. <laughs> and... I called Mike. I was like, hey, bro, I'm going to be going to Texas. Uh, I got to go out here and do something real quick. And um, he's like, what you going to Texas for? Mike, I'm thinking about moving to Dallas, to open an office. He says, huh? I said, yeah. And he asked me, he said, so what did they say about it? And I told him, I said, well, everybody said that you not steered me wrong. They, um, they've admired the growth that they've witnessed me going through personally and that I should go. And we pulled the trigger and we came out and everything just kind of laid. I knew that we were supposed to do this because everything fell in line. I went to pick up uh, cables from a place. Uh, Uline is where I ordered the classroom uh, type tables from. And the tables were like a hundred and some dollars when I first looked at them. <clears throat> and I said, okay, well, I got a budget for this for about ten grand. And long story short, they they supposed to deliver my order, and they screwed my order up. They sent me the wrong stuff. They sent me the big regular tables. And I told them, I said, I can't use these. These are not going to work. And the second order that they sent to me, they sent the order to – um to the house, and the order was supposed to go to Dallas. So I end up having to get, I call it an unnecessary U-Haul, <laughs> to pull 
the tables from Atlanta to Dallas, and not to mention when the, the person who sold me the tables over the phone, they sold them to me $78 higher than the regular price. Still don't know how that happened. But they corrected that for me, and they gave me that money back. And then I show up um, to this place where they, it's like a holding facility here in Texas because they had misplaced a couple of tables, so they shorted me. And when I got there, the guy said, hey, man, by the way, we have chairs, um, and would you like to take a look at them? We were told that we screwed up your order, and uh, we need to make this right with you. And so the number of chairs I'd initially paid for, they turned around, and the manager uh, bogoed. I don't know if you know what that means, you know, buy one, get one. The manager bogoed me another 20 chairs. So I started looking at this, you know, hey, this has to be divine order. Sometimes you, you want to do things, but you're second-guessing your own moves, even though you've gotten confirmation from multiple people. And then a good man upstairs give you an instant reminder that if it was not supposed to happen, nothing would go right. But when everything goes right mentally, you're hunting for everything to go wrong. But he shows you that this is what you're supposed to be doing. Now, have it been a challenge since I've been here? Yes, it has. I made the biggest mistake, in my opinion. I moved off of 35 down in a, 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 a city, uh, Lancaster, which is 34 miles outside the city of Dallas. And moving out here, I have to cross over Interstate 20 every morning. And no matter whether I'm going to run appointments or going to the office to meet a new hire, I have to pass Interstate 20 going east every morning. And the biggest challenge for me personally is it, it's not Michelle, it's not, um, it's not Chevelle, my oldest daughter, it's not Galen, it's not my grandkids. It's my baby girl. Because I started realizing that with her, uh, with the two older kids, I've been there with everything with them all the way through high school, you know, every event for high school, all of the events that I was supposed to go to, some of them I wasn't supposed to go to. I was at everything because I was, you know, a heavily involved parent at the school. And she sends me these little clips, you know, of different things that, that her and I have done together, um, going to basketball games, you know, going to baseball games, you know, going to do the father-daughter dance, that kind of stuff. And, and because the memories are popping up on her phone, you know, that's one of the things I hate about Facebook now and all the other little uh, social media outlets is that it sends you memories. Memories are great when you're in that place, but they're horrible when you're in one place and don't want to be there. You really want to be home with them. And so that's been the challenge. Uh, <clears throat> I was sitting with a client uh, Friday of last week, and she sent me this picture. And when she sent this picture, she's like, Dad, you know, this is tougher than I thought. Um, I didn't realize I would miss you this much. Um, when can you come home? I love this business, guy. I love the guys I work with. If it was not for the support system that I have at Southeast, I promise you faithfully, I would have then dropped the ball on this. Because for me, money is not everything. I've had money before, and I used to let money control me. And I'm not that way anymore at all. My mindset is, you know, that's one of the reasons why, and maybe I should say this, maybe I shouldn't, but you guys know me. I give it to you the way I feel it. And I'm working on that, thanks to Mike. Um, <laughs> um, that's why 400000 haven't really been that, that interesting to me because I know what it feels like to make that kind of money. That's not a big deal to me. My big deal was how many families' lives can I change? How many grown men' lives can I alter to let their little girls and 
their sons be able to live a better life, to be able to do the things that they've never dreamed they could imagine doing, go places they've never been able to go. That's my goal. I don't care about anything else. And so opening this office up, it, it, uh, yes, it awarded me the ability to get leads everywhere. Uh, it's been a little challenge because Texas is like uh, a different America. When I say a different America, Texas is one of those places to where uh, I feel like it's nine states and, and one little area is like a whole other America. That's what I mean. You know, it's so doggone huge. So you could drop a, an order for Facebook and it be, uh, shucks, 60 miles between the two appointments. But you're really in the same city. It kind of reminds me of Alabama. Funny thing about it, our first week out here, Michelle rode with me, and we went out and did some appointments. She was like, oh, my God, it is crazy. We was prepared for this in the first year at Family First Life and didn't really realize that we was being prepped for this move. I says, why do you say that? She said, because this is Alabama all over again. And, you know, Mike knows that, and Gary as well, you can – uh, think, oh, it's Birmingham. Oh, yeah, it is Birmingham. I were on the other side of town. But that's what happened. And, and now, you know, we've gotten this thing kind of broken up into sections. I got this big map and kind of subdivided the DFW area and to be able to condense things to where the guys could get a little bit better at running appointments. Uh, they were running, some of them was running two appointments a day, some was running three appointments a day. Kind of freaked me out a little bit because I'll tell you, if you've ever been to Atlanta on a regular basis and be able to witness the internal culture in that office and then you leave home, home being the Atlanta office, and go to another city to where you live or where you're building a location at, and you have to be there, and it's outside of the Atlanta deal, oh, my God, it, it, it almost makes you dislike people. Because in Atlanta, you know, you've never had to pump and prime people to go and dial. Here, they're so amazed with so many different things that they did not know was available to that's what they want to talk about in the mornings. So I started challenging them. And I usually go to the office with $100 in my pocket. So um, this is one of my secrets. So I go to the office with $100 in my pocket, and I put the $100 on the front table right under the whiteboard. Whoever books the most appointments today is going to either end up with zero or you're going to end up with some money before you leave. I don't know how much gas you had, whether you got money to buy lunch, but we got lunch money and gas money on the table today. Don't let me outpace you. Yesterday, I booked for a new agent. I booked a new agent 15 appointments because he has a very, very bad speech deal. Uh, he's not from this country. And so I dialed and booked his appointments. And, of course, I had to uh, treat them like I would treat my kids. I, uh, instead of me saying it was 15, I told one guy, oh, man, I, I, I did 12 because it was the first time that I'd ever seen him get 13 appointments booked. And when I saw that, I didn't want to kill that for him, so I just gave him the competition and let him win it. You know, now, would I have done that three years ago? Heck no. I'd have kept my $100. <laughs> That's just being honest. But what it has done for him, his first appointment was at 7 o'clock this morning. It's been a challenge. I've had – uh my crying days here has been because I miss my girls. Um, and my coach, uh, <laughs> Mike Kilman, I call him sometime, bro. It's, it's another rough day. I'm, I'm trying to get through this. But I'm committed to the point to where um, I can't quit because I got so many people depending on me here. And if I do quit, I'll let them down. Um, even going home every two weeks, it was bad for them, but great for me. And I finally told Michelle, babe, we can't go home every two weeks no more. I will find reasons to go down 20 um, every two weeks. 
And I said, uh, babe, we can't do that anymore. We're hurting the people. I said, just imagine if Mike had went home to visit mom, his mom and dad every two weeks. Can you imagine what kind of, pardon the expression, what kind of shit show we would have had at the office in Atlanta had he disconnected himself like that? So I've had a good uh, business model to look at, unlike a lot of other people in this industry. They don't have anybody else to look at. They don't have anybody else to, to mimic themselves afterwards. You know, they don't have anyone pushing them to be great. And so they're just getting by. They're doing the best they could possibly do with what they got to deal with. And I just started thinking about it. What, what, what will I do if I don't have Mike? Because, you know, you got to realize at some point, I don't know about you guys, but this is just how I think, Michelle and I both. At some point, Mike can say, you know what? I'm retiring to the golf course again. And this time, this time the retirement is different than the first retirement. He can really retire and go golfing every single day and pick up if he wants to pick up. And if he don't want to pick up, he don't have to. He's done the hard work. And so I started thinking, let me take advantage of this to where I can grow to get to where he is. Because I, I, I looked at um, a reminder on my phone on Twitter Again, reminders, reminders, reminders. And this thing popped up from um, from May 15th, 3.32 p.m. was when I sent Mike a message, hey, man, what are you doing now? And when I saw that the other day, of course, I was um, sitting with the lady that can't come to the office. She didn't, wanna, didn't want nobody to come to her house. So I met her at the office to, to do a policy for her, and this thing pops up on my phone. And the lady looks at me. She says, baby, baby are you okay? Did someone pass? I said, no, ma'am. I said, just a memory that popped up in my phone. And when I showed her the memory of what had popped up in my phone, I said, this is the guy that got me in this business. And at that point in my life, I was going through some horrible things, some dark days in my life. And... She said, so this guy is the one that helped you do all of this. I said, yes, ma'am. He gave me the willpower to do this, the ability to socialize with people again because I don't like people. And she told me, she says, well, how do I get involved? Needless to say, I hired her, wrote a policy, and hired her at the same time. She's scheduled to take her exam next Saturday. So it's, it's just this thing, is, it's, it's really not all me. It's, it's, it's the guys around me um, that have helped me get to where I am. Um, I'm excited about it. Um, I know you're saying, well, you don't sound excited. Yeah, I'm very excited because I look back, oftentimes, the first leaderboard that I received in May when I first came here four years and some months ago, and Mike Dean was at $400,000. And I'm getting ready to make a poster board of that. And no one really knows outside of Michelle and the gentleman you all that are on this phone with this, well, gentleman and lady, I'm sorry, Athena, that, that, that are on this call that understands what that document means. That document for me says that Mike was at 400 the four years ago, now four mil four years later. What it says to me is I have the same ability being connected to him to do the exact same thing from the time I get this place open up four years from now, it'll be at $4 million or better. And so, again, I'm just mirroring everything I see. I don't have to do any thinking because the thinking has been done for me. And that's why I'm always so grateful. That's why you always hear me streaming how thankful I am for my current situation, thankful for the people around me. That's why I'm this way. Without you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. 